Hey, welcome back to the Voron 0.2 build. We've got a bit of a short episode today. I've got other things going on and don't have a lot of time to work on this project, uh, but we're gonna build the A and B idlers, which should be fairly simple and straightforward. So we'll get to that in a minute. But first, one order of business to take care of. I've been having so much trouble with these little hex wrenches, hex drivers, um, and uh, Vanilla Ike put a comment on yesterday's video and said, hey, why don't you just print some T-handles for those? And so we are still gonna stick with using the official LDO uh, tools that came with the kit, rather than switching to my own drivers, but uh, we're gonna make this a little bit better with this nice little printed handle. I found this on printables.com yesterday. Um, I think it's Keyzat is the designer of this little thing, and it just screws together like this and there, there are variations for different sizes of uh, hex nuts or hex wrenches. So um, yeah, I'll leave a link to this, uh, to these STLs down in the description of this video. Um, but this, hopefully, once I get this in place, this will prevent me from making, from dropping all of those, uh, or this wrench so much. So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get started with our A and B idlers. We've got the printed parts, which are just very few right up here at the top. We're gonna make more bearing stacks like we did yesterday. And so I should have plenty of practice with those at this point. So I think this will be fairly simple to do. Again, instructions up here in the corner of the screen. Let's do it. All right, and the only trick I think here is gonna just be making sure we pick the correct parts, right? Because these are similar looking to one another uh, for the A side and the B side, but they're different thicknesses so that these uh, bearings end up in the right vertical place to line up with the belt path that we need. So um, yeah, I think this is the one we need, first of all, uh, for the one side, and we'll start there, and we'll build our bearing stack. Same as yesterday, right? We put the shim on first. I'll get you a closer view of this. There we go. So shim on first. The bearing with the wide side facing away from where the belt path is gonna be. And then this one goes the opposite orientation so that we've made that nice path for our belt. And then one more shim on the top. just like so. And we'll do the same thing with the opposite side. These little shims are so hard to pick up, like just off the surface of my table here, that I have to slide them down to the edge of the table to be able to grab them, which is what you see me doing there, just because they're so small to grab. All right, so we've got these two, uh, and then the shorter one of these, goes with this one, right? And we'll go just like so. So again, we have a little bit of our screw sticking out here. I'm sure that will screw down into the top of an extrusion somewhere. And then the wider one of these parts goes with this one, right? So they end up being the same height, but the belt paths are offset like so. All right, then the next page of our instructions, we have to make sure that we pick the correct one. So this right here is our B idler, and it's going to go, I'll get you a wider view again now. It's going to go on this, the left side of our frame as we're looking at it from the front. So this one goes over here like this. It's going to, this screw here is gonna screw into the top of this extrusion, just like we did with the motor mounts in the back. And then this extra T-nut that we have here, or this extra nut that we have here that's in our no drop nut slider thing should slide down here and we'll stick another screw down through the top. Right, and that one should go there. So, having learned from what we did yesterday, this will be easier because we only have one of these to line up instead of like three different spots to line up. So we'll slide this up almost to the end, it looks like, and get those lined up. 
and then use our fancy new driver here with our T-handle and see if we can get these threaded in place. Yeah, that seems good, and our little bearings here are turning nicely. We'll double check the cable path in a minute, or I mean the belt path, sorry, not the cable path, the belt path in a minute to make sure that it uh, is lined up correctly. But I wanna go ahead and put this other one on before these screws fall out. And again, we're going to need this preloaded nut here. All right, very nice. And then we've got these two little sort of cam lock things. They just slide into the fronts. So there's these openings in the front of these two parts. And what these are going to be for, I'm pretty sure, is the top hat that goes on top of this whole thing that folds up will fold down and then two bolts will fall into here and we can turn these uh, to lock that in place. So that's what those are for. On our next page, oh, our next page shows doing the other side, which we've already done. And then, yeah, it wants us to check the orientation here just to make sure. So like on this side, which is our A side, so this is our A motor side, we've got our belt path with our two uh, bearings stacks down here on the bottom, and that lines up with where this is. So this will all line up perfectly for that belt. Whereas on the other side, our B side, that belt path is up here across the top where we've got these two and that lines up with this one here. So that is all looking correct and our belt will just fit through this little cutout right here in those parts. All right, so yeah, it has us check both sides and then from the top as well, these angles are supposed to be kind of angled toward the outside of the, of the frame, which is correct. And I think I forgot something because I have extra parts sitting here on the desk. Yes, I did, look at that. So right there on the upper right of this one, on this side, before we put this one down on here, we were supposed to preload four M3 nuts. And I didn't into this extrusion right here. And I did not do that. So, <laughs> see, I'm in a hurry because I wanted today's episode to be quicker since I have somewhere to, that I have to go to. Um, and in being in a hurry, I missed something. That's okay. We can put these back. So I have looked ahead, though. Um, these are sort of double versions of the no-drop nut uh, plastic printed pieces, right? Remember, we've got... These kind of single ones here were the ones I've been using everywhere else on the kit. These double ones are specific for this particular spot, and looking ahead through the instructions helped me figure this out. Um, these are for the magnetic door latches, and this is actually the magnetic door latch part right here. And so um, you see the two screw holes here are very close together. And so if you had like these single ones and you had a nut there, it would be you wouldn't be able to put two of them close enough together to uh, get them to line up with those two holes. So there's a special version of the STL for the no drop nut piece um, that is specific for the door latch and that lines those two holes up perfectly like that. And so those happen to be the ones that we need over here in this extrusion. Um, and so I've printed that. Again, I will uh, leave a link in the description of this video to that specific STL. It's just in the same repository as the rest of the no drop uh, nut pieces. But I think, as far as I can tell, this is the only specialized one that we're going to need for this particular build. They do have some other ones as well um, that are for specific spots on the kit. But from looking through the instructions, I'm not, I don't think that we're going to need any of the other ones. I think this is the only special one we need. All right, so with those two now slid down there into place, we should be able to put this back. That's another reason I like to get out all the parts that I think I'm going to need for a section of the build and have them here on the table. Because then if I'm left with parts at the end that I didn't expect to still have, then I know that there must be something going on and that I've missed a step. 
I also slid this one in backwards. So let's turn this around. Um, just as a side note, I did notice as well with these little sort of cam lock pieces that are for the top hat, this uh, tool that we used yesterday for spacing out our A and B motor pulleys. Um, and I think it's actually gonna be used for a couple of other measurements throughout the build. They actually built a little hex uh, end right here on this end of this piece that fits into the top of these to help you turn them. So um, it actually, if you wanna save this part after you're done with your build, it can be your lock unlock mechanism for those things if you don't wanna have a big Allen wrench around to do that. All right, so I think that that finishes this, this section of the build. We'll go ahead and look forward again and we should, yeah, we should end up with a page with our favorite little astronaut again. He's gardening now, that's cool. Um, and so next after this, I'm pretty sure, yeah, is the, the Z motor and the lead screw and then the feet as well. So we'll be working on kind of the underside of this frame the next time. And just as a programming note, I'm pretty sure the next time is not gonna be tomorrow. Um, we've reached the end of a week the weekend is coming and this particular weekend uh, I have a bunch of family stuff that I've got to get done and so I'm pretty sure that for the next two days I'm not going to have any time at all to work on this project. Uh, if I do, I'll record it and release the videos. If I don't, which is most, most likely, then I will be back in two days on Monday for me and um, we'll continue on with this z-axis step then. So that does it for today. Pretty simple build, um, just more of the kind of the same stuff we've been doing. It was easier moving some of those nuts into place and getting things lined up given the experience that I had had with it yesterday, which wasn't so good. Um, so yeah, that was, that was quick and simple. I uh, hope you have a good day. If you're watching this on the day it comes out, I hope you have a good weekend as well. And I'll see you, like I said, probably in a couple days and we'll continue on with the build then. Have a good one.